What is up, YouTube? Welcome to an Ottoman build order guide. This is my first Ottoman build order guide. I've been playing them since the ranked ladder recently launched. And I've got to say, Ottomans, they're looking like a top sieve. They are really strong right now. And I believe this build order is probably one of the strongest going around right now. It is heavily inspired from Magic's play in... Well, it wasn't just Magic, but I believe Magic was the first one to be doing it in the Wallalol tournament. Um, he took out Marine Lord with this similar strat. Um, I don't know what his macro was in the game, but I basically crafted the build around what I saw from him. And that's taking advantage of the early military schools, taking advantage of how strong the meta is. Uh, the drummer boy uh, on a donkey or horse or whatever it is, is really strong right now. So uh, I expect nerfs for that in the next patch. If you're watching this a couple months after release, it may have been nerfed. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to be showing you this build order. It is a dark age military school rush, um, with spearmen just to throw off your enemy and basically deny gold if you can. Um, and off the back of this, we're going into an archer and Sapahi all in. Sapahi is going to rely on the military school production. And then you're just going to, you can just focus on chopping a lot of wood and pumping out a lot of archers. So hopefully you enjoy this build, guys. Really strong. Probably the strongest feudal push, I think, in the game right now. I haven't had extensive play with this, but the games I have, it's felt really good. If you are looking for a written version of this build order guide, I will have that in my Discord. Um, you can check that out in the link in the description of this video. Um, without further ado, guys, let's get into the build. Oh, last thing, in my next video, I will be doing an analysis of one of the games I had with this build order and talking through the strengths, weaknesses, and basically just running you through all my thought process that happened during the game. All right, guys, what's up? We're going to be jumping into the build order of the Dark Age Military School into Feudal All-In. Um, I say All-In, but it's not necessarily All-In. It's just a single TC play. But nonetheless, let's get into it. So first thing we're going to be doing is sending five bills out to stone. One guy to build a house, and then he's going to go onto a straggler tree right afterwards. Um, in this particular game, I didn't think about the whole base layout of this. I'll cover that in a minute here. But I'm just going to talk through the early macro real quick. So this guy, after building the house, goes to straggler. New bills start coming out to food. And the guys that drop off stone all come to a straggler except for one who's going to come out and build the military school. Um, so Newville's constantly going to food here in the early game. As soon as you get the first 50 wood, you're going to have five guys on a straggler. So you're going to drop off 50 wood in one go. These guys come back to food. And then that 50 wood is going to be used on a mining camp. So typical scouting pattern here. Scout around your base, so I like to go forward and then split out and come back around. Um, the reason why I like this on a single scout play with the Ottomans is... Is you're, you're going to have time to collect sheep around your base, come back, drop them off, and then go forward and scout where you're going to be targeting with your spearmen. Okay, so as soon as the guy finishes building the military school, he's going to come out onto gold. Um, and you're going to be rallying a total of nine guys to food and then start sending out the gold. So we're going to have nine on food, three on gold. As you can see, our scout only got one sheep um, because the opponent scout, well, bad RNG at the front and also the opponent scout stole our sheep. Uh, losing to an AI easy, I know, I know. So we're going to drop off the sheep here and then this guy is going to scout forward right before our spearman pops out. Um, in this particular game, I didn't do it, but this is what I recommend. So this scout should maybe pick up one or two sheep here, and then he should move all the way forward to the opponent's side of the base to scout where his gold is, and you can start attacking with your spearman there. So typically, I recommend targeting the gold for most sieves. Um, this strat is not going to be relevant for every single sieve. I don't recommend doing this against Rus or English. Just because, well, Rus, they don't have a gold mine that they're getting at the start. And English, they can just shoot you with the bills. So I recommend just delaying and hitting them with, uh, just going straight up to Feudal Age. And then building military schools after that. 
Nonetheless, we're going to start chopping straggler trees as soon as we have nine on food, three on gold. We're going to age up with four vills from food. Uh, with the twin madraza. Now, this is going to be spawning berry bushes. Um, what's the timing on it? Okay, so they're regrowing after 120 seconds if depleted. Keep in mind that's if they're depleted. So you need to deplete the berries before the timer starts ticking. So I recommend prioritizing the berries on the twin madraza before sheep. Which is what you'll see shortly. As soon as I age up, I take guys off here and put them onto the berries. Um, and what, this whole time in transition, I've been rallying to wood. Um, and as soon as you get the 50 wood, drop the lumber camp near your base. Um, and as you can see, we're about to get housed. But as soon as you see the next villager pop out, that's when we'll have the wood for the next house. So you need to be aware of this. As soon as you hear that pop block, drop a house at your near your lumber camp here. Um, so that you don't get housed. If you notice a little bit late, late, just build it with two vills rather than one. But you'll see here this house comes out right before the next villager. So continuously rally to wood. Nothing changes here. One thing I want to mention here is our base layout. In this particular example, I didn't lay out my base correctly. And the reason was because I was testing two different variations of the build. I tested wheelbarrow versus broad axe. And I honestly expected broad axe to perform better, but turns out wheelbarrow did. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And um, basically, I didn't take into consideration the layout of my base. Um, what I recommend is always building your houses in front of your TC, like right in front, if possible. Um, because it's, it's less likely that you're going to want to build your military school or your twin madraza out front. Um, if I was to look at this right now and consider where I'd put my buildings, I would put my tri twin madraza right here. Um, and then I would put my military school like right here or right behind my TC. Um, you don't want to be building your military schools out front just because if your opponent like has early aggression on you and you end up losing control and losing your military school, that's a really expensive building to lose. So that's 250 resources down the drain. So I recommend building them out back. Twin Madraza, you'll see in a second here, the reason I recommend it in this corner is because berries spawn up up here. And then they start spawning down the side here. So the closer you can have the berries to your TC, the better, or the more safe it's gonna be. Um, and, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, now just talking through the macro again, we've constantly been rallying to wood. As soon as you get 150 gold, which I overgathered a little bit in this demonstration, but as soon as you get 150 gold, you want to take them off and put them onto wood. Now, age up. As soon as I aged, I should be teching in wheelbarrow. I'm a little bit delayed here, but it comes in very shortly. Um, and you want to move your sheep bills to the berries. And then you want to move the age up bills to the stone mine. So you'll have four on stone here. Um, and your, one of your bills can come out and start building a blacksmith. Um, the blacksmith boosts the production speed of your military schools. Um, so very important here. It's by 25%. Wow, that's really good. Um, so we're mining stone now as well. Getting prepped for the next military school that'll come out after this blacksmith. And we're just constantly rallying to wood. So pretty simple, just constantly to wood. Um, and once these guys get the stone for a another military school, three of these guys will come across to food. Keep in mind, these berries are gathering 50% faster because of this landmark. So it is, I think, more efficient than sheep. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, as you can see, we got the stone for the military school. Um, and we're going to come and build that over here. Military school being dropped. And we're also going to drop archery rangers very shortly. Two archery rangers being dropped. Um, and these two guys will continuously build that. Once you have 14 guys on wood here. Um, I'm just going to rally a few more into food. Because um, I took one guy off food to build these production buildings. So once I... Put another guy on food here. I believe we start rallying across to gold. Now, first vizier points is going to be the meta. Now, 
You might be like, why not sheep? That seems like the best option. Faster gathering rate and whatnot. We're going to be looking to force early engagements here. And I'm telling you now, this unit will get nerfed next patch. It is ridiculously good. Um, if you have the combination of the extra 15% movement speed, plus you're also getting all these different buff options available to you. Um, the options are 15% attack speed, two melee armor, and the other option is one ranged armor. So extremely good in all situations. If you think about it, men at arms have quite a low base attack. So if they're going just like full men at arms, two melee armor is huge. Um, if you're full archer war, an extra one range armor is cutting 20% of the damage that archers are putting out. And if it's against Zugnu, it's going to be even more because Zugnu of China have a burst attack. Um, and each burst attack has like four damage, I believe, four base damage. Um, so you're reducing the damage by 25% there. Um, it might even be more, I can't remember off the top of head what the base damage is, but it actually makes your army or your archers competitive against Zugnu. Something to keep in mind. That's why this strategy is so strong in my opinion. It's the meta that makes all of the difference in here. Combine that with the speed, which allows you to disengage from their archers in an archer war, um, or catch up and run them down if you have the, the military advantage really strong so we've sent three guys to gold here um and then we're constantly rallying to food and, and wood what i recommend is having slightly more than uh slightly less than double on wood as you have on food so as you can see here we have 14 on wood eight on food um and then we're just going to constantly alternate between the two um with the gold bills we're going to be prioritizing blacksmith upgrades so if your opponent is really greedy, I recommend going for Siege Engineering first. If he's making units, get the appropriate upgrades. So if you still have like a bunch of spearmen left, Archer Defense is going to be the best if they're going Archers. Um, otherwise, Archer Attack's great as well. Um, you're also making Sapahi from your military school. As soon as you age, you should have switched this across to Sapahi from Spearmen. Um, and... Uh, Archer Defense is also going to work on your Sapahi and Spears and stuff as well, so take a pick between the two, um, generally Archer Defense is better um, for, as a first pick, but small differences. Um, so first, in this particular example, we've gone Archer Attack first, but if your opponent is greedy on 2TC, go Siege Engineering, start killing houses, production buildings, anything that you think will slow your opponent down. Um, but yeah. So, from here, we're just continuously massing. Keeping the three on gold, and as I mentioned, just the constant swap between, uh, food and wood to keep your, um, your economy balanced for archer production. If you're up against French, Rus, this is not going to be the best option for you. You're going to have to change it up a little bit, um, and add in, like, a, instead of going triple archery, you might want to get one archery, one stable, one racks, or something like that. Or two racks and one archery. Um, because the archers and Sapahi alone are not going to deal with the knights. Um, so you need to adjust according to what your opponent's civ is, what units they're making, and just slightly adjust the macro here. The gold can stay the same. You only ever need the three on the gold and the one guy on stone still. Um, the reason we have one guy on stone here is because as soon as our next Vizier Points system point thing, um, Vizier Points here, and that's what they're called, <laughs> um, you want to be going for the military school. Um, as you can see, the stone is built up for the military school, um, and you can build that as soon as that comes in. Um, in like, I'd say like 90% of the situations, that's what we'll be going for. If you're up against um, someone that's pushing you back and you need the safe food source, go for the sheep. But most of the cases, I'll be going for the military school. As you can see, it's our macro is relatively well balanced here, keeping it all very low. Um, and as soon as we get like this influx of gold, you should be going for the blacksmith tech as well. Um, and we have a form formidable mass. The thing about Ottomans is... They're not like someone that gets a ton of units out very quickly. It's around this point of the game is when they really get online. You've got 
two soon to be three military schools pumping out Sabahi for free. And you have constant unit production from three archeries and soon to be four. Um, so as you can see, the vizier points came in. I went for the mil extra military school. And as soon as I get the wood for that, we're dropping that down. So now we have three production buildings pumping out units for free. We have three archery ranges, which are also producing units. We have full blacksmith upgrades for our units. We have wheelbarrow. And then as soon as you have the excess gold here, say for example, you don't want to go for siege engineering here. You're just having uh, extended fights in feudal. You can then just click on broad axe, uh, horticulture and all that. So really strong build order guys. Uh, I th expect Ottomans to get nerfs in the next patch because um, I think they're disco being discovered on how how strong they can be, especially with the military schools, the meta, um, cheap military production. Um, it all just adds up, and they're very solid too. So hopefully you enjoyed this build order, guys. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them over the next few days. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.